Okay, here's a quick video on RetroPie 3 uh, Beta 4, although the process here is going to be really similar for just about all the other versions. There's not an awful lot of difference. Um, and this is going to show how to copy ROMs from a USB stick onto the Raspberry Pi. So using this method you wouldn't have to have a network connection on the Pi, you wouldn't need to use an FTP client to copy ROMs across or even uh, a Samba share on your Windows machine or, or Mac or whatever PC or uh, computer you use to copy them across. You can just use a portable USB disk and put it across, which is ideal if you can't, for whatever reason, get a network connection on your Raspberry Pi. Now when I use the Raspberry Pi and RetroPi, I pretty much always use an FTP uh, client to copy the ROMs across remotely. That's because it's fairly easy for my setup to have it networked, but I can I can imagine there's probably a lot of circumstances where you just can't get it networked for one reason or another, or you just want to copy it um, copy ROMs across with a USB device. And um, I'd say that the FTP process or even the Samba network process can be a bit more flexible. Sometimes it can be a bit more quicker, easier, specific to drag and drop exactly what you want. But, um, like I say, this is ideal if you haven't got a network connection. Now, the process that we're going to follow is getting a USB um, device. I've got a USB 3 and a USB 2, a little sort of thumbstick that you can put in. Um, but uh, it should work with either, shouldn't be a problem. Well, I did spend about 10 minutes trying to get it to work with one USB device and didn't get anywhere. I don't know why, it just didn't seem to like it. So, if you, if you do end up not being able to follow this guide. Um, try a different USB stick just on the off chance. Okay, so you log into your Pi as normal, it's with uh, user Pi password Raspberry. Then what we're gonna do, um, although I'm using Raspberry Pi 3 beta 4, by default, the S, that's a sort of a release effectively, so a, a point in time at, um, I think in this case, something like June the 18th. Uh, there was a release and that's the version I'm using so you might be using a slightly newer one a slightly older one but that's the one I'm using and when you use a release typically the USB copy service that we're using to copy these across is um, enabled by default but to play safe you can always go in and enable it anyway and you can do that by once you've logged in you'll be dropped into this home pie directory then we can go into the setup script as normal so change directory to retro pie hyphen setup like that and in this directory, we're going to run sudo uh, retropy underscore setup. And because this is a um, effectively a clean image, um, I haven't changed anything on it, and it's saying I haven't got much space on it. That's just because I haven't resized it. But for the purpose of this, I really don't need much space, so I'm going to continue anyway and press yes. Okay, we're in the menu, and... Like I say, I haven't updated the script, so it's pretty stock for beta 4. And if I go into setup 3, then if I scroll down here, we've got option 328 USB ROM service. So I'll select that, OK, and I'm going to enable the USB ROM service. Like I say, I'm pretty sure it's set enabled by default anyway, but it wouldn't hurt um, to double check that. So you just press enter once you've selected one there. It's enabled it. OK, and then I'm going to quit out of this, cancel and cancel. And that's it. So what that's done is just make sure that when you put your USB stick into the Raspberry Pi or the RetroPi package, uh, it will do its thing. It will copy the directory structure. So that's what you have to do initially. And whilst we're in this view, I'll just quickly look at the ROMs that we're going to copy across or the location we're going to copy across to. So if we change directory back to the home directory like that, CD and then the tilde sign, and we're going to see, uh, change directory into RetroPy and then the ROMs directory. And in the ROMs directory, we're going to go into the Mega Drive folder. Now, if I list that, ls ah just to get a bit of detail, um, you can see three ROMs already there. Now, this one in white is one I copied across a while ago using an FTP client, and the two green ones are ones I've copied across earlier using the USB ROM copy service. And they're green because when they're copied across, it looks like they're given an executable um, flag, which isn't really relevant in, in what we're doing. It's just the way it's marking that file of, of the permissions effectively. So you can ignore that. It doesn't matter what colour they are, really. I don't think it has a bearing on anything. Um, yeah, so I've got three at the moment. Now, if I was to open up or run Emulation Station, you'd see that it could see those three files. 
And quite often, when you do, particularly when you do activities like scraping, it's good to exit emulation station first. But for the purpose of ROM copying, it probably doesn't really matter. Obviously, it will be out of sync with your game list.xml, which holds the scraped information. But that doesn't really that doesn't really matter. It's not going to affect anything. It's not going to write to your game list.xml. So basically, you can run it if emulation station is running. Okay, so th that's how it stands at the moment. The next thing we're going to do is prep our USB device. Let's see if we can bring that window up. Okay, so you've got your computer view, and I've got my USB disk here. I've got various files on it anyway. If I open that up, you can see here I've got a miscellaneous folder with random files in, a new folder which is empty. I may as well delete that. Don't don't need that. You don't need to have folders on, but you can have them if you want. And from RetroPy three um, onwards, the step that you've got to do here is create a folder for this purpose as opposed to um, letting the, the process auto-create all your ROM folders to copy across. Uh, you'll see what I mean in a minute, but basically create a folder. So I'm going to do that by right mouse, new folder, call it RetroPy. It has to be called, I th yes, it has to be called RetroPy. And that's pretty much what you've got to do. So what I'll do is I'll quit out of this and we will um, put it in the Raspberry Pi and automatically we'll get some extra information. So do that now, bring that down here. Eject the uh, USB disk. I mean, ideally you want to do that with the Windows feature just to make it uh, a bit more safe. Okay. So that USB stick is now in the uh, the RetroPi or the Raspberry Pi, and what it's doing is copying across, and it's basically done it already. It's using a command called rsync to copy the file structure across to the um, to the USB disk for the first use. So this in itself isn't doing anything except copying across a directory structure, which we can see in a second. Um, like I say, when you do this, it is quite intelligent and it knows what's already on one side um, on the Raspberry Pi SD card and what's on the USB disk, so it doesn't take an age to copy ROMs across when we get to that point either. Um, so okay, so what I'll do, I'll pull that USB stick out of the disk, out of the Raspberry Pi, and when you do this, it would be quite helpful if the, the USB disk you had has got one of those lights at the end that indicates the disk access, so you know when it's finished doing, because it'll stop stop flashing it's a lot um, easier to tell I haven't got one of those but I know that it's really quick it'll only take a couple of seconds so no time at all I know it's finished now so I'll go and grab it and put it back in the PC okay so that's back in the PC and uh, open it up as you normally would and you can see uh, it's just as we saw it before, got a miscellaneous one that I've had anyway, and the RetroPy that I created. But if I open up that RetroPy folder, hopefully there's folders inside. Okay, so it's done two things. One is copy the configs, which are the configurations from uh, emulation station. So if I go in the from RetroPy, and this is the emulation station, and this is found in um, the directory would be homepy.emulationstation on the, on the RetroPy. And you can see that it's basically copied all of the files within there. You've got your um, configuration for your controllers. If I open that and try and size it so it fits properly, you can see that I've got uh, a USB um, controller there and I've also configured a Sony PlayStation controller there. Now I haven't tried copying these back, but what you most likely do, given the folder is called to RetroPie, if you replicate the folder structure, say in from RetroPie, you could, I suppose, copy that and then paste it in there but I don't I don't think I'd bother I just do this um, do it remotely in the uh, terminal session um, but it's useful to quickly and easily see the configuration files that you've you've got there mind you you can't do it on a terminal session if you haven't got a network connection so I can see why perhaps uh, this could be useful but, um, yeah you can edit that and you can edit your game list so you might edit uh, or create your game list file on your Windows system and then you want to copy it across so you can see um, I've got some, some information there against uh, a ROM I've got. 
but that's not really the point of this video. The video is more orientated over the ROMs folder. So this is what the RetroPy system has done. It's created these folders on the USB disk, and in here you can see all of the systems, and that will mirror all of the systems that you've got on your on your um, RetroPy setup. And we're looking at the Mega Drive as the example, and in here it's empty. Now it's not empty on the Raspberry Pi, and it, uh, what, basically, it's not going to copy anything that exists on the Pi back to the S USB disk. It's going to copy from the USB um, device to the Pi. So it's not, strictly speaking, sync it won't synchronize, it will copy. Which uh, probably makes things a bit cleaner, otherwise you'd be, it might be hard to keep track of where all your files were. Well, no, maybe it should synchronize, I don't know, but I'm pretty sure it doesn't. So. Copy all your files that you want into this folder. So what I'm going to do is grab a couple of ROMs in, and put it in the Mega Drive one. There we go. Copied a couple of .gen files across. That's now on the USB stick. And what I'll do is copy that across to, we'll put that in the Raspberry Pi, and we'll see these get generated. Okay, so I'm going to close that window. And we're already in that directory. Now I'm going to grab the USB stick. But the vast majority of that five or six seconds is me trying to fit it in the Pi, not um, me waiting for it to do it. But if I list it again now, it's already done it. It's really quick. It doesn't take any time at all. So these are the two um, ROMs we just copied across, Fireshark and Golden Axe. And now all you have to do is restart Emulation Station or start it if you've quitted it at the moment. And it will quite happily uh, reread that and they'll appear. And that's all there is to it. So basically you can just copy across your ROMs and uh, the Pi, the RetroPi system will see them. Not difficult at all, just bear in mind that it isn't copying across the ones that already exist there. Um, and we'll just double check that. I'll go and grab it now and put it back in the PC and see how it looks. Okay, here we go. in RetroPy, ROMs, and we're in the Mega Drive, and it's just got the original two that I copied. So it basically copies whatever's here across to the Pi, and you can see the, the results here. And like I say, Emulation Station's quite happy to see that, and you'll be away. So it is really useful if you can't get a network connection, get a USB disk, preferably one with a, a light indicator so you can see when the disk activity is finished. But as you can see, it transfers it pretty quickly. It's quite intelligent the way it copies it. It'll only be USB 2 because Raspberry Pi is USB 2, but that's still pretty fast. And that's it. Hopefully this has helped you. Uh, any questions, please put them in the comments. Thanks.